You know you're supposed to get them likes up, man. Come on, man. Get that likes up. I'm going to play one more song, man. Hopefully, man, you know what I mean, the likes match the people, man, that's in here before I bring my guest on, man. Everybody hit the like button and share this video. Quit playing with this game. <laughs> Everybody, I appreciate all of y'all for being here right now. Blessings to all the ladies. Uh, before I even call uh, Virgil, I need for you to hit that like button. Come on, man. I want everybody to have an opportunity to get in here. As you know, YouTube do not support uh, my type of content. You know, when you're constantly talking about pimping and hoeing, when you're constantly using profanity, no, the notifications are not going to get out there like that. You know what I mean? So that's why 
I tell you guys to hit the like button. Never ask you for no money. Never ask you to, I'm not a preacher asking for a building fund. None of that, man. You know, just support the game so other women can have the opportunity to hear it. Other young fellas, um, up and coming players, you know what I mean? Little young Max, little gangsters, you know what I mean? Uh, squares, nine to fivers, you know what I mean? Everybody, you know what I mean? Get the opportunity to hear this game, man, you know what I mean? So, man, I understand that, you know, a lot of y'all just like listening and, and things like that, and that's cool, you know, that you like to listen. But be a blessing to the game for once in your life <laughs> and hit the like button, man, you know? But uh, thank you, man. I appreciate everybody who uh, already did that. 217 people in here. I don't know why I got them little bitty likes. But it is what it is. But without further ado, man, let me call Virgil right quick. Let's do that. What's going on, Verge? Oh, hey, Tim, much. How you doing? Oh, man. You know, we live right now. You know what I mean? I'm doing very good, especially because we get to hear you. Oh, okay. Shit, here I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, of course, you know, they read the, ti- read the title, so they already know the things uh, that we're going to be talking about. We're going to, of course, talk about, you know, Ron Newt. You know, we're going to talk about Peppy Le Pew. You know, but before we talk about Ron Newt and before we talk about Pepe Le Pew, you know, we need to know a lot of things, you know, about you because uh, the previous time when you was on the platform, you was on with Ron Newt. And at that time, you know, uh, a lot of the questions was, you know, asked to Ron at the time. And the reason, of course, why I had to do that, because it was a lot of slander, a lot of uh, verbal crucifixion going towards uh, Michael Jackson and it was just so good to hear Ron speak so well, you know what I mean, about Mike. You know what I mean? Not just about his life, but about Mike and really abolish a lot of those lies that they're trying to establish on Michael Jackson. And I'm so glad that those questions was asked because, as you know, we no longer have uh, Ron Newt uh, anymore. So I appreciate, right. you know what I mean, that time that God blessed me uh, to get the chance to talk to both of you. Um, but as you know, we... We here tonight, and we just need to know some things, you know what I mean, about, you know what I mean, Mr. Virgil, uh, fairly, because it's, it's so many things, you know what I mean, that you know that we don't, you know, not just about your life, but just what was going on at that time, everything. So I just want uh, the young people, you know what I mean, to get acquainted, you know what I mean, with who you are. First of all, uh, where are you originally from? I'm originally out of Fresno. That's how I was raised up. Okay. And, and so... And I, I, I'm by way of Oakland, L.A., San Francisco. I've been all around the country, but, you know, that was my local mess. You know. Okay, okay. While I was traveling around, you know. Okay. And what, what type of... Um, you know, we know, you know, the beautiful, you know, I mean, man, the innumerable things that you did out here in these streets, but... I want to know uh, what type of childhood, you know what I mean, did you have? You know, was you athletic? Was you, was you into sports? You know, what was the things that you liked, you know, coming up as a child? You know, what type of childhood did you have? Well, as you know, all kids like to just have a bunch of fun playing all type of everything. Start out with the riding the, the broom for, the, for, the, for like the cowboys, you know, uh, as a little bit of kid, then when you graduate off into grade school, you want to play sports like football, basketball, tennis ball, uh, volleyball, all type of things that you're going to enjoy just having fun with, you know. But as I raised up, you know, I was like, uh, my mother, you know, was real uh, religious-like, so they had me going to Sunday school, they had me going to church, and, you know, just what religious people do with all their kids, trying to raise them in the right fashion, you know. Mm-hmm. But as I elevated on up until uh, uh, fifth grade, they wanted me to play instruments, and my mother picked out an instrument. I hate it all the way to the day, a violin. Oh, I couldn't stand it. 
And then when I get into the great they didn't want me to play a trombone. I couldn't stand neither one of them. Oh, man. Yeah, that kind of, yeah, that kind of shot me to the left. They did it right there, but I'd have been an a, a, a artist all the way to the day. Wow. wow. Well, you know, yeah. I played the piano and the organ myself um, and, of course, grew up as a, as a singer. And I wish, you know, now that I'm, uh, you know, 36 years old, I wish that, you know what I mean, I had uh, the talent, well, took out the time to actually play the violin myself. It's funny that you say that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just, I just want to ask, I'm just curious, um, what was your mother's, you know, uh, religious belief? Was she a, a Christian? Christian, yeah. Okay, okay. And was your uh, was your father active in your life at that at this time? Oh yeah, my mother and father was very active in my life. I was probably one of the only kids men of part of mine that had a mother and a father that that raised us. You know, and all through school when I was playing sports, you know, uh, you know, I was supposed to be uh, right before. So I went to school. You know who I went to school with? Who? The, the twins, the whispers. I mean, oh wow! Whispers. <laughs> That's wow. what I went to school with. Wow. Uh, we used to play football in the fifth and sixth grade. You know, those guys were very good athletes. You know, they was like a uh, uh, in a grade higher than me. I was in the fifth; they was in the sixth. Mm -hmm. But we uh we used to play sports all the time. You know, but uh, when I go into like uh, they went to the next school. You know, when they they graduated to the seventh. Seventh grade, you know, they went to another school called Edison High School. Mm -hmm. That was one of the baddest high schools in Fresno. If it wasn't bad, wasn't no need to step it up in there. They took the teachers and hung them out the windows and everything. They had some awful bad guys when I was coming up. But you know, the whispers was two of the guys that stood up with all that because they were bad themselves. Entertainers, yeah. They were in the fourth and fifth grade. I sit there watching, you know. But uh, as I got into the seventh, eighth, ninth grade, you know, I started running track, track football, stuff of that nature, you know. And I became one of the best football players that at that time that came through there, you know. Taking six or seven guys into the end zone, you know, and, and uh, people hollering and stand, put me in, you know. And that was my fantasy to really become a football player, but I had a coach that wasn't. You know, back then the coaches would have favoritism, you know, so I just quit. Then a four or five other guys that was real good athletes, we all quit at the same time. So that led me off into coming up to adult stage, whereas I wanted to uh, ride in my car and stuff of that nature. So I went off into uh, my mother told me to get a job, and uh, they were post out for me a car. So I went and got a job. I didn't know nothing about the street life and none of that stuff like that. But right. when I went and got the job, I turned around and didn't like a job. I just took one just to have a car because didn't nobody have cars at the time. Mostly everybody was walking, you know, kids for the projects. Or nobody had no money, you know. They had nothing but still work on the weekends and all to get the school clothes. You had to go out and get a dollar an hour uh, uh you might make two dollars a day, uh, mm. ten dollars a week or something. You know, it's real bad during that time. You know, I didn't have that problem because I had a mother and father, but I still had to had to pay my dues and go do what I need to do. You know, because that stuff, that part of the job wasn't for me. So I took a test and got a job. I took another test and got a job. One for the state, one for the city. So now I'm trying to figure out which job I'm going to keep. And before I could figure that out, I got fired from both jobs for having two jobs. So I'm riding down the street. Uh, and some lights are blinking off and on. So when I pull over, one of the girls I had went to school with had got in the fast lane. You know, she could come up. Uh, a sporting lady, you know, was in the sporting life, how, you know, because that's what, what, what time was at this time, you know. How old were you at this? How what what were uh what was your age at this time? I was about eighteen years old at that time. Okay, okay. And uh, she got to call me, and she had another friend that was from Oakland, 
California. So she looked at me and said, you know, we wear the slick clothes and the slick uh, hair and stuff like entertainment. She was like Jackie Wilson and Jane Town, you know, that kind of hair we wear, you know. Temptation, uh, all of it, that same style. So, you know, you always want to pattern it after something, you know, we just entertain the style to so pattern it after, you know. So we, we was, uh, the girl looked say he's really nice looking out of life, you know, so the girl said, get your money down for him, and that's what she did. So that put me off and took me my feet wet as a tennis up into the fast lane. Hold, hold so on, I just want to, hold on, I just want to make sure because everything that you're saying is the best definition of important. I just want to make sure that the audio uh, is good. So before you even, uh, you know, finish the story, I want uh, everybody to give me confirmation uh, in the audience, in the chat, and let me know that you could actually hear uh, what Virgil is uh, saying. Let me know. Because these stories is the best definition of a classic, and I definitely need for you young players and Young Max and young pimps and everybody, man. You know what I mean to hear. You know what I mean what Virgil is saying. You said it. Okay, most people. Okay, you saying that it's good. Okay, Pharaoh okay. said. Pharaoh said that it was a little, a little muffled. Okay, so yeah, that's what. Hey, Virgil, could you do me a favor? Could you turn that TV off in the background? Okay, you can hear it, huh? Yeah, I won't. I just, I just need for everybody to be able to hear because they keep saying that it's a little muffled, and I want to make sure that man everything is is heard because you oh, know this okay. is your life. Can you hear me now? Can y'all hear him now? They hear me? I'm just waiting on them to. Uh, I'm in the uh, chat waiting for them to uh, confirm. That they can hear you, but yeah, just go ahead and uh, just go ahead. So uh, let's let's go back, cause I just because this is too classic of a story, Virgil. So she got in the car. <laughs> so wait a minute, she got in yeah. she got in the car, and what happened? Yeah, she looked at me and said, "Ooh, you show sure is fine, you know." So the girl told her, "Say you better get your money together, you know, just uh, get your stuff together, just give it to him, and you you have a man." So that's what she did. So that was the first time really getting my feet wet into the game, which I played Pat a little bit before then. You know, I had a couple, couple girls. You know, like I said, I'm an apprentice this time, so I had a couple of my accents. Uh, uh, but it just wasn't really nothing. You know, when I was 15, 16, not 15, but 16, 17, you know, just getting my feet wet. You know, but when I turned 18, that's where the journey really got started. You know. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this. Before we get into that, I want to know, because before we become uh, a representation, we had inspiration. So I want to know where your inspirations came from. Who was the ones that actually compelled you uh, to be in the lifestyle? Like during that time, you know, uh, who was, um, you know, known in the town, really doing big things and having it their way? You know, in the game at that time, you know, that was a, a major influence on you. Oh, that's a good question. This guy by the name of Milton Peters was the coldest back that I ever laid eyes on at this time. You know, I would have been watching him for a few years, but, you know, just paying attention to the show, but, you know, let him perform, you know, because he was set brand new cars every year. He'd be the first one out, one of the four players in the whole town at this particular time. But he would beat everybody out, you know, as far as getting a new car. So, yeah, he stood up and outstyled everybody in the town. One night we went downtown, man, just to look. And there was about 15 uh, prostitutes on the corner. Mm. And, and he turned the corner in a brand new convertible El Dorado. I never forgot this to the day because he had his hair permed. He had the gray sideburns. He had the white shirt and tie with the diamond stick pin. He had the diamonds on his hand. And as we turned the corner, he was going about two miles an hour and he was leaning to the right, watching all up and then watching him back as he slides 
and you could hear the girls whispering. That fascinated me so much that I knew right then what I admired but never thought that's what I was going to become. But to make a long story short, he got out of the car. He was so sharp. I mean, he was a, a major factor in the town, and everybody knew it. Hold on, hold on. Just for the record, what, what did you say his name was? Virgil. Oh, Milton Peters. I thought you were talking to somebody else. Yeah, I was just, you said Milton Peters? Milton Peters, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure... They knew his name, you know what I mean, listening to this classic story. So you said you seen him and he was so sharp. Yeah, he was the coldest Mac that was ever in Fresno at this particular time. Wow. So uh, I sit and watch him flip brand new Cadillacs every year before everybody came out for years. In 1967, by this time, my group had already got their feet wet in the game. It wasn't about three of us. We had got our feet wet in the game. In 1967, Milton caught a case, and his girl sent him to penitentiary. Now it was, we were the next group to come up to get in the fast lane. So I still hadn't turned, let me see. I might have just barely turned 21 at this time. And so the same girl that, that sent him to prison tried to choose me, and I would not accept it. So, uh, hold on, on hold on, hold on. The girl, yeah. the girl that was, uh, the hoe that was with him tried to choose up with you, but you wouldn't accept it. I would not accept it. Okay, okay. Question Why did you not accept it? Because it's a black, it's a, whenever a woman give a player a case, that's giving the game a black eye. Mm. They were real strict at this time when it come to that. You fade them all the way out. I had a friend of mine come from out of town, from San Francisco. Matter of fact, he's dead now. Uh, he was so angry at the time. It was very... No hoes, no pimps, nobody would like uh, uh, a woman that's so in jail. That was a no-no. So anyway, she got faded all the way out, you know. And uh, as the game went on, we became the major max in the town at this time. Hold on now. When you say we became, who is we? Myself. Another friend of mine I raised up to childhood, his name, we call him Blue. Uh -huh. He was so sharp. He was another, he was sharp to an element that we come up in. So we was top dogs in the town, Blue and myself. And uh, this was 1967. We had, we had been apprenticed, and now we really hit him pretty good. He's so deep, I'm so deep. I done went on down to L.A., knocked some girls up by the civil brand, you know, and put them on back, sit them down, you know. So life was going smooth. So for two years, 1969, it was in the wintertime, I was riding, uh, checking some of my trap, and running to a pole with my car and bit my whole car up. And so I end up getting rid of the car. The police had got car getting on me. My name was ringing all through town. Don't know how they do me like that. They stopped me on every block. Every time they see me, they own me. So my father told me, I think, I think you better leave. You say they hot on you. What I was doing, I haven't figured out to the day. All it was was the name and the cars I was driving. So I left that one in the L.A. Hold on, hold on for a minute, Virgil. And the cars you was driving, what were the cars that you was driving at the time, Virgil? There was nothing but brand new Cadillacs. But, you know, like I say, people didn't have cars at the time. So when you're driving a Cadillac, 
you probably get an interview because they know what you're doing just from what you're driving. Right. Yeah. So uh, it was just like a person walking down the street with paint all over them. You know that's the war. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when the, and when yeah. they seen you in the Cadillac, they knew. That was the one. You dig that? That's dig the one. That. Yeah, we know yeah. how you're doing. Dig they work hard every day and ride and they're mad at the players. You know, that's just how it was. Right. But so when I, I moved to L.A. and uh, I was at a partner's mind house and I was laying in the cup in the chair sleep. And when I woke up, some, some girl that had, was there had chosen and put some money in my pocket. <laughs> 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 and, oh, so, uh, yeah. and so uh I hung around in LA for about uh, a year. I mean it was hit and miss, you know, that that uh series, you know, they come and go, come and go, come and go, you know. So I ended up moving back to Fresno. And uh I took a look at the town because I hadn't been there for a whole year. Okay. And some other friends of mine that's uh they called him big. He was hitting real strong. Now he had passed Blue up because Blue supposed to have been the man. But he had, he had got bigger than him. So here's another guy. So now when I come back, I looked over the town. I start putting my mask down. So, yeah, I got deep again and started doing my thing in the town. And uh, uh, I had, uh, in one year, I had I just as big as everybody else there, or bigger. Maybe it didn't take a year, probably eight months. And I had lifted the lid off the town, you know, so here's another year coming 1972, because my name is ringing now, because I didn't come back. Another friend of mine named Charles come to the door and told me, said, man, you, your name is the biggest around here. I started laughing at him. He said, man, I'm serious, because I wasn't I wasn't mad to just put it down like that, you know. I'm just mad to be smooth and cool at this time. Hold on, hold on, Bert. Before we get to the 70s, let's back it up just a little bit. Um, okay. When did you first come in contact with the War Brothers, and where are they originally from? Okay, they're originally out of Louisiana, out of, uh, Louisiana, but they moved to the Bay Area, from L.A. to the Bay Area. But that's what I was getting to then. The Ward Brothers start coming. Oh, no, no, let me back up a minute. I was getting ready to tell you when Milton come out of prison. That's what I was getting to. Okay. I'm going to tell you about the Ward Brothers. Okay. Milton come out of prison, and my mother-in-law brought him to my house. Now, this was a guy I admired as a kid. And uh, he loved me so much how I was putting it down, it reminded him of himself. So when he left, he came back by himself. Milton wanted to hook up with me. And he came to my house every single day from then on. He became my best friend. We rode to the tailor shop. We done everything. But he wasn't the man no more. I was the man at this time. Right. But he he admired me. So he wasn't doing good. He was all right because he had a good woman named Eddie that stood by me. She was known all across country for standing up with him. So uh, we went to the tailor shop. I said, man, you need to get your new car because nobody wanted to respect it no more. They were respecting the young generation. And so they was on him all the time. But I kind of protected him because I was kind of young and strong and buff, had a reputation for, you know, for standing up around the town there, you know. But, and uh, he stayed up under me because if he don't be up under me, they really would have kind of ran over him at this time because he wasn't who he was no more, you know. Right. But I brought him all the way back up to speed. But when I then I talked to the guy and he got my brand new El Dorado and everything, so I brought him all the way back. He was my friend, you know. So I looked out for him. And uh, the position that he used to have, I got it down. So he just hung with me. They didn't respect it no more. They respected me. So now the Ward brothers come down. They, they come down from uh, Oakland. At this time, this is 1971 or 72. It's coming in and out, coming to my house, just hanging out. All the players all across the country, they come to my house. My name was ringing across country. 
So sometimes they had knew Milton from before. So we all got together as a little family and we got really, really tight, you know. So uh, that's how the Ward Brothers come in effect a mess with us. So in 1972, they was doing a movie called them back. So Frank said, he called, he called uh, uh, Milton P. And uh, we were sitting around the round table just kicking it, you know, and, uh, and they were drinking, you know, and going on stuff. I say, well, uh, I'll go to the store and get another bottle. So Frank said, take my car. So I got a brand new Eldorado at the time. You know, Frank called with like a 70 or 69 uh, El Capillero. So I just said, okay, I'll take your car. I just took his car with mine now. And it rode all around the town, went to the liquor store, come back, you know. But it's a real nice car, you know. And so uh, uh, we come back. So Frank was rushing back to me, but I'm going to get on back. He said, man, he's doing this movie called The Mac. Man, he went back about a week later. Frank was dead. Somebody killed him. Damn. Yeah, that's how that went. They just left my house. No less than a week, they killed him. Wow. Before the movie been made. Yeah, that's why you don't see him no more. You see him in a barbershop in the movie talking about the, whatever he's talking about there, but right after that, you don't see him no more. Right. Like, I remember seeing yeah. Ted and him later on, but Frank was in the uh, barbershop and things like that. I remember him saying, you know, uh, he was like, uh, yeah. you, you know, these young players, they don't have their game tight. They don't have them game right. right. Yeah, I, I remember. And Goldie just sucking yeah. up all the game. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how that went, you know. But they were very good friends of mine, you know. But respected me to the fullest, you know, all the way to all of them. I knew them all, you know, personally. And uh, I went down to Oakland after he said he got killed, you know, because uh, we got really, really tight, you know, so. Uh, they kind of stayed in, so. and uh, they didn't know what was going on, so that's kind of how they kind of stayed in after the little drama went down, you know. But getting on past that, you know, uh, I kept elevating, and they had a player's ball down in Fresno, so I ended up running the player's ball, and uh, that's probably one of the first ones I went to, and because I wasn't even going to go. Uh but I went on anyway, you know, and I ended up getting the cameras flashed on me and everything when I walked in. So then I moved in and then I knocked a little broad up out of Alaska, you know. And hold on, then, hold uh, on, hold on. Hold on, Virgil. We not, me. Virgil, we not about to just walk past like that, you know, like that wasn't nothing. Like, we we not about to just act like, you know what I mean, we didn't just uh, hear that. Wait a minute, you said you knocked the bitch from where? Alaska. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eskimo, Eskimo, yeah. I was had an Eskimo once. Yeah. You kind of rub your nose, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> you did yeah. You yeah. did knock it, knock it yeah, home I, from Alaska, you know, Eskimo style. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> I'm just kind of going through and kind of fast getting a briefing over how the years went, you know. Yeah. Because if we be all day, let me tell you step for step. So, yeah, yeah at that, and then I got... I got, uh, I have about 11 deep, you know, 11 deep over there, because I got noticed by Cross Town, so I got about 11 deep. And, uh. Wait, hold on, what year? What year? It was 1972. Okay. So, in 19. Yeah, in, in, no, no, probably, no, uh -huh. probably 73, 73, 74, one of, one of the years up in there. I got about 11 deep up in there, because I had two places at the time. We had just come back from the tailor shop down in, uh, in uh, uh, Oakland, you know, so I used to know my clothes made in Oakland. Then we go to Park Williams in L.A., get clothes made for the daytime, and at nighttime we had the clothes made for, for Jack Williams at night, you know, so we used to dress two, three times a day. Yeah. All we did was dress, dress, and ride. That's all we did. Hold on, stop, stop, yeah. Ver stop, Virgil. Tell them, tell them, you said how many times did you used to get dressed up within one day? Two, three times a day. Yeah. <laughs> and you said... Hold on. And you said the players back then, you said they used to what? Rest and what? Dress, rest, and ride. That's Dr all we done. <laughs> you see. So hold on. Let me let me yeah. ask. At that time, you know, how, because uh, I, I see, you know, you, you deep with the jewelry game. At that time, how was your jewelry game at that time? I had the biggest jewelry in the country. Okay. 
Yeah, I always wore big jewelry ever since I was young. Okay, so what? That's how I come up, you know. That's how I was. I try to come up. That's how I learn it, you know. You got to do the best to be the best. Okay, so let me ask you something. What year? Because I know you started, you know, in '63. Okay. Right. So when did you start buying? What year was it when you really started buying big jewelry? Well, actually, when I started buying big jewelry, I had in 1967, I had a five carat solid carat stone. That was in 67. Mm -hmm. So I was 21 then. Right. Young man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. A person, a person have never even had that to the day out of all these years. So I done had two five carat stones and a three carat stone. Those are the biggest stones that I ever had myself. Mm. Cause you don't find those are rare. You don't find them all the time. But I've been I've been winning big jury all my life. All your life. All my life. All, all my, my adult life. Emphasis on all my life. Um yeah. and let let me ask you about, you know what I mean? Because we you know, of course anybody that see you, you know, man, you always got, you know, the right attire to get your desire around here. So, you know, you stay clean. So you know what I mean? How long you been clean? Tell them how long you been clean, Virgil. You know what I mean? Getting suited and booted. Taylor Well, made. I've been clean. I was just, that was just in my DNA. I started that in grade school. Right. But so, it just advanced as I went. It just advanced and advanced and advanced, you know, because I was always a little different from other people. I was always like a perfectionist. So uh, if one strand of my hair was, 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 I had to stop. I wasn't going out. And I used to have my hair, you know, wear perms and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just a perfectionist about myself. You know, it was just me. Okay, well, let Everything me. Everything got to be on point. I just want to, I just want to ask you a question because, you know, like I said, every time we see you, you know, you clean. You know, what I mean, your nails clean. You know, what I mean, shoot everything, man. You know, what I mean, just gleaming, right? So I just want to ask mm -hmm. you, you know, um, just a question, you know, because as, in today's era. 2020, you know, a lot of the young guys, you know, uh, they seeing some guys on Instagram and even a lot of times on the street, you know, they be seeing guys, you know, looking raggedy, you know, a lot of these guys, you know what I mean? is missing teeth. A lot of these guys, you know, got bad, <laughs> some, some of these guys got bad height. They got bad hygiene, Virgil, you know what I'm saying? Some of these guys, man, you know what I mean? They, they, they ain't took a shower since Jesus was crucified, man, and still be claiming they want to glorify the game. So, yeah. I just I just want to ask you, can you be authentic and really in it? Can you be a representation of this game and you have bad hygiene and you've been missing teeth and, you know what I mean, you, like, have something against showers and things like that? Like, can you represent this game that, that you know of, the game that you know of, you know what I mean, and that, and that with that type of style? No, I, I, I definitely wouldn't even come up under that act, you know, and I don't <laughs> even know how person you feel comfortable. That way, I'm 75 years old and got all my teeth and don't have a cavity. So I've been taking care of myself ever since a young age. Cause I always liked the perfection. I was always particular. That was just my DNA coming up, you know. Right. Uh, that's, that's something you can't even get around, you know. So everybody don't have that same strategy when it comes to themselves, you know. Uh, they just, you know, you just don't be, you got to be raised up a certain way to do certain things. See? My friends that I come up with was just like me because water takes its own level. You know, you could put a a, a shark or, or grow eight feet in a, in, a, in a fish tank, but 80 feet in the ocean. So if you can't elevate and to be something in your own arena, you're not even going to know how to even treat it yourself. Mm. You know, things rub off on you, you know. Things rub off on you, you know. He wasn't as bad or good. Mm. Well, let, let, you got bad company, bad things gonna rub off. You got good company, good things gonna rub off. It's just how it is. 
So association brings similarities. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me let me ask you this. Um, when you brought up the Mac, now I do remember, if I recall, uh, Ron Newt was also, you know what I mean, in uh, the Mac. You know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. at that time, was you cool? You know what I mean with uh, Ron Newt at that time? Did y'all know each other? During the time of the Mac, Rod Luke come to my house in 1970, 70 or 71. Him and a friend of his named Lil Butch, which I know of them both, you know. And uh, the Mac came out in 72. Okay. So Ron Luke was, a, was like a little kid then because I was young myself. So uh, I didn't see Ron to again to 1976 from that time. Okay. And when I Ron was doing well, whenever I came up to his house up there, and he hadn't seen me, and I didn't know who he was. He didn't know who I was. That's how long it had been. So I'm sitting in the chair. And he come out looking because I got about. I don't know. I don't know how much jury I had on. I was jury up, <laughs> and uh, could nobody match me when it come to just jury. And uh, at none of that time, you know, because I, I was, I was always kind of, uh, I didn't take less for the best, you know. I had to go to the stream, and so when he saw me, man, who is this? <laughs> So a friend, friend of ours said, well, you know, there's that Virgil. And it all snapped back to him. I mean, damn. So Ron treated me like a king. He done that. He dead and gone. But he done that. When, let me ask you this. Okay. Now, there was, of course, because, you know, the last time, I want to just, um, make sure everybody know the times because we know you started you know what i mean in 1963 okay mm -hmm. but later on in your career you know what i mean uh you came to your own interpretation and you said that you know i have to uh have something else going on besides basically presiding over women you know right so what i want to know is before you start mixing it you know what I mean? Basically, with the spoon, how many years uh, did you do it strictly and only from the womb? Never stopped until recently. Uh, I would say in the last, let me say from 63, I would say to uh, 2000. And something. I kept, I rock steady, you know. Yeah, I rock steady. Uh, till I felt like I was old enough that I had outgrew that, you know. It's, it's levels and steps that you take when it comes to life. You only got a, a, so much of a run, you know. And uh, I just outgrew certain things, especially when they start falling by the wayside. Uh, I done turned a lot of women down to be trying to still be on my line, you know. I still be having women trying to get on my line that wants to go get it, man. But I done outgrew that so much. And I done retired from that part of it, you know. I'm in a movie production, book writing. And I done elevated all the way past all of that, you know. So I just took my my life, my game to another level. That uh, two of the shoes just won't fulfill my dream. Right. Things are costing more now and uh the headaches are worsen. Right. And uh I refuse to just stay on that, that path from that angle, you know. Okay, okay. Well let, let me let me just say this. When um you decided to basically make that transition and make a collaboration with uh those uh you know, two lanes. Um, of course, 
you know what I mean, your obtain was a whole lot, you know, uh, greater. And your campaign, oh, had, yeah. and your yeah. campaign definitely had to be greater simply because, you know, uh, you come from an era, you know what I mean, in a, a, during a time when, you know what I mean, the drug game was, you know, uh, man, you know, as, as, as people would say in the street, beautiful. So, well, I'm going to tell you ahead. something. Go ahead. A lot, of, a lot of guys do a lot of things that they say they don't, don't do, but they do. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. I've done things that, you know, big game is play is move out of sight. Mm -hmm. I've done things that could nobody see. Me and the Ward brothers were hooked up. You know, a lot of players have hooked up and done things, but you kept your other game out front. You keep your other game in the backfield, you know. And that's the big game that's played through by the sight. You know, you're doing this here to win. You're not doing this here but just to, uh, to please another guy. You know, you're doing this here to win. You want big pretty homes, want big pretty day. You got to, you got, see, business people, start out working, but they learn to invest their money in the other thing to accumulate big things. So the game is a business if you handle it like a business. You can't handle it like no play thing because it's going to come, it's going to go. You're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. you got to have something to fulfill those bad days to keep you rocket steady. And a person, a fool is money will soon part. And if you're a fool, you're going to part your money more time than you're going to have it. Bottom line. So you got to be smart with how you handle your business. You've got to treat the game as a business. You can't keep it like it's no fun thing because you're not going to have nothing but a, blowing a whole lot of wind, uh, screening it but not meaning it. Action become habit. And if you got a habit of taking your money and blowing it, that's what you're going to do. If you got a habit of handling your business, that's what you're going to do. And you're going to know who's having their business and who's not. You're going to know who's riding in brand new cars, who live in big old pretty homes, who's riding slick, who's buying them $300,000, $400,000 cars, who is and can't. And that makes a lot of people that's in your same arena start blasting and hating on you because they jack off there, and you got enough sense to know how to put you in the proper perspective. And that accumulates a circle of a lot of people. You might like them, but they don't like themselves, and they blame it on you. <clears throat> well, one thing I will say, you know, about you, you know, and, you know, like I, you know, I tell the people all the time, you know what I mean? I don't agree with everything that basically everybody say, and I don't, I don't expect them to agree with everything I say. But at the same right. time, you know, uh, when we put the works against the words, you know what I mean, and we see what it add up, what I will say is your philosophy, whether people agree with it or not, you know what I mean, from 1963 to now, you basically been in everything new. You've been riding clean, you know what I mean? Ever since, basically, you've been doing your thing. And like I said, you know, uh, a lot of people might get offended by that, a lot of older cats, but I told you, you know what I mean? You're one of the coldest Macs, if not one, if not the coldest Mac, you know what I mean, that I've ever seen, you know, just being real, um, because you've been consistent, you know, consistency, you know what I mean? Right. Um, I speak to a lot of the older cats in different lanes, and they can tell me about everything that they did, you know, and I appreciate that, whether it was great or whether they telling me the mistakes that they made in the ancient times, you know, that was in the ancient times. But very few can tell me something spectacular from the ancient times, the middle, and what they're doing right now in the recent times. And you're still doing your thing. So, you know what I mean, you win it, you know, with what you do. I, I mean, that's not up for debate. Like I said, when everybody get into the debates and, and things like that, you've still been 
doing your thing. So going back to, you know what I mean, that story with Ron Newt, like I want to ask you, what are some of the coldest memories, you know, that you have about, you know, Ron? Because when Ron died, I didn't have the opportunity at that time to get it because you had different uh, older people that was having discrepancies, you know, a whole lot of discord. And at that time, a lot of niggas didn't want to come on one accord. And like I, uh, I just want to say this because I know it's going to be some older pimps and older Max and everybody listening. Check it out. Even if you got a discrepancy with another player, another legend, another pimp, what have you. Hey, check it out. When one of... uh. You know what I mean? Your partners, your friends, somebody you roll with, they died. You got to put your pride aside. You should be able to put that discrepancy aside to basically sit up there and give accurate history about your friend. And I had older cats at that time, man. Yeah, seeing I do it, but I don't want to do it with him, man. Fuck him. I don't fuck with him no more. Hey, man, forget all of that. You know what I mean? So I just want to ask you, what are some of the coldest memories uh, that you have of Ron, or just you know, a good times, a fellowship, you know, fun time. Yeah, me and Ron had fun all the time. You know, I was down there when he was making his uh, getting ready to make his movie down there in L.A. And uh, we always had a good time. Ron respected me to the fullest. He loved my game. He loved my get down. You know, and uh, and. Uh, a lot of people despise something they don't understand. You know that. But Ron was up under me enough to really just uh, understand all of my movements, you know. And uh, we used to go out and have dinner. We'd be up at the house, kicking it, you know. Ron, Ron knew was really a smart cat. He had something that a whole lot of people wish they had. He just didn't get a check put in proper perspective. But Ron called me. He said, Bird, you the only one. I said, I'm going to ride with, take with, and do whatever with. And he called me and said, Bird, we get ready to go see Jamie Fox and Wendy Williams. <laughs> he said, you the only one. I said, Ron, I'm taking us some business. I'll call you back. He said, okay, call me back. I had a flight out to Vegas the next morning. I said, you got to give me a few days. Man, the next morning when our flight landed, they say, Ryan Newt is dead. Mm. I say, you, where you get that information from? I just talked to him. I say, this is what I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I know. Then I get on the phone, make some calls to come to find out it's true. And we supposed to been leaving to go on a couple of them shows and go, you know, build up some big things at that moment, you know. But that's kind of how it happened. But we, we had good times all the time, you know, we did some filming and, you know. Wow. A lot of things, you know. We kicked it with Doobie right before he died, you know, and we just had a good time. We hung out all night right before Doobie died, you know. But Ron Newt was a genius. Hmm. I like that. I like that. Did you speaking of uh Rose Royce Doobie, uh do you have uh any memories uh with him, uh Verge? Shit a week before he died. We were together all night. Uh about a year before that, we was at his place, we hung out all night, he begged us not to go. I took a partner of mine with me that had never met Doobie before. We hung out all night long. Doobie was so much fun. Mm. And uh, when I went, when I'm in Ron Newt went down to L.A., uh, couldn't nobody find Doobie. So Doobie heard I was in town. And Doobie was at my place in 15 minutes for wherever he was at. And hugged me and said, man, I'm so glad to see you. And say, man, you the only one I can. He said, I said, man, everybody been saying you sick to you. Man, I just didn't want him to see me. I didn't want to be bothered. He wow. said, well, they say you was here. I showed up with the quickness, job, everything. We hung out all that night, about 1 or 32 o'clock that night. 
when we can believe we stand outside, it's coming in the summertime, you know. So Ron had known, I said, man, we're not going my road, man, because you keep clapping going my road, and I ain't going to go in that. And so Ron said, tell him, Ruby, it's rolling. Ruby said, Ruby said, man, if I had a new one, I sure would be in it. <laughs> 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 so I said, come on, man, we're going to drive the road here. So, so Ruby drove his car, drove mine, and uh, I paid for everybody to get through the gates and everything, you know. We come back. Doobie had a, a song playing on there. Hey, look at this. He had the top down on the Jags. I said, oh, yeah, I remember that. So, hey, Bird, I said, Doobie, don't be why I can't find you. He said, Bird, I promise you, every week, every two weeks, I'm going to call you. And that's how we left it. And next day, I know Doobie died. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Can, can now, you? Ron's dead. Yeah. Now, Ron, let me ask you this. Um, what are some of your memories uh, concerning Philmo Slim? Philmo Slim is like my brother. People don't know that. Philmo been knowing me since I was a kid. And uh, Philmo come through Fresno one day at the Rodian Park. And Philmo had a beautiful uh, El Dorado the third way he began. What year, oh, it was bad. What year was this? That had to be 1965. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, wow, 55 back, years ago. Went back, yeah, they went back to San Francisco, so I started going to San Francisco. We all had mutual friends, you know. So we have always kicked it, you know. Me and Phil Movers had, in the 70s, we Every time I get a car, he would help me get the same car that I got. Uh, the '65 Talisman, the '77 Fleetwood D. Ellinger, and uh, so we've been friends a long time. And I, I used to, me and Fremo used to live together in 1986, and uh, we used to be on the road together, you know, kicking it. But I love Fremo; he's a Great friend of mine, Philmo's not no hater. Uh, he, he admires stuff, you know. He speaks highly about me, you know. He'll tell the world about me what, what's going on because he knows the truth. And uh, we've been all down to Linus with a, with, a, with a game and everything, you know. So we got a long history together, you know. Yeah. Long now, history, long history. But uh, he's my personal friend. Now, okay. let me ask you this. Um, I want to hear, because you have made a statement, so I'm gonna, I want to get some history uh, right now uh, concerning the Magnificent Seven. Um, okay. And I want to know, you know, uh, if you could bless us, you know what I mean, uh, with the names of those that was in the Magnificent Seven, and also tell us, you know what I mean, where was they from? And the years they started and the things that they did actively when they was in the game. Well, my personal friend was Chuck White. He was out of Ohio, you know. And me and Chuck used to be at the after hour in Sacramento back in the 70s. And uh, he had a, a lady by the name of Barbara. She had a restaurant in Sacramento, but, you know, Chuck uh, was like a pretty boy, you know. He had the confidence in himself being nice looking, which he was all nice looking, but we used to kick it real tough in Sacramento and be at the after hours and things, you know, because, like I say, I was always younger than them, but I was always appeared to be the same age as them as coming up, and all my friends, you know, because I carried it real strong all the time, you know. And, uh, we met Chuck, we sitting at the table, kicking it. So when I leave and go around the country and talk back, this was 1980. I met Dixon Cadillac in L.A. Because I just bought a, a, a 1980 Brazil. And it was like sliced, cut, and diced. Because it was cold-blooded. Some different extra stuff done to it up there in 
Guess who I run into? Who you run Jeff into? White and he, Jeff White, and he got a 1980 career. So we chopped it up and chopped it up, and I don't see Chuck White no more until the federal penitentiary. We're right there together. Wow. And then all of them start dying off. So Chuck died about after we, we had Chuck died about a few years ago. But the broad that he had named Bob, Chuck died. He's like. I had a car wreck or something down in uh, Palm Springs. And the woman that he had in Sacramento was, uh, used to call me and, uh, all the time, you know, talk about Chuck. But she was saying her prayers one night and she died on her knees saying her prayers. Wow. And then they start dying off one after one after one until they were all gone, you know. But they made a lot of noise uh, in the past years, you know. So and Chuck White was real tight. So Chuck White, you know, for the record, you know what I mean, was out there in yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Okay. And the rest of the crew of the Magnificent Seven was from Ohio. Yeah, all of them was on off that east coast over here in the Midwest, you know. That's where they was all from. I didn't know him all that personally like that, but Chuck White, I knew him a lot better. Okay. Because they were always on the moon, you know. Do you, now, I just want to run some names, you know, by you because there's certain representation that we would love to have more information about. Um, mm -hmm. What do you know, and what was your thoughts concerning Joe Cato? Joe Cato we used to be down in uh. L.A. at the at the uh, Disco 9000. That's where all the players used to hang out. Go up there. Joe Cato was about 13, 14 deep and white girl. So Joe Cato was doing his thing. I was there with him, you know. He was doing his thing. Wow. And, and when uh, Joe Cato was doing his thing, what year would you say this was? <clears throat> Let me think. What year was this? This in the 70s. Okay. Okay. Had to be around 70, 77, I think. Okay, okay. Might have been 78, somewhere in there. Okay, and and um, yeah. does the name uh, Joe Langford, you know what I mean, ring a bell? Yep, yeah, Joe Langford. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it rings a bell. Okay. And the, um, did you ever get a chance to meet him or hear anything? At that time? Just in passive, just in passive, not run together, nothing like that. Because if I didn't hang out with a person real tough, you know, shit, I might forget them the next month. They <laughs> run into them somewhere and say, oh, yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let, um, let me ask you, did you ever hear uh, anything or, or, or see the original Johnny Moe? Uh, which one? Old Johnny Moe or young Johnny Moe? No, the original Johnny Moe, the old yeah, we used to be in Las Vegas together back in 72. Uh-huh. Yeah, I knocked off the baddest bro in Oakland one time. I took a strength to Las Vegas. That's why I ran into Johnny Mo. He had a friend named Barbecue that he used to hang out with. So uh, we was all at the hotels there together, you know, same hotel. Matter of fact, we got, got some apartments over there. We got out of the hotel and got some apartments over there you could rent. You just can go to Vegas and rent an apartment in five minutes. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's a good question, Don. I don't know why we got 438 people listening and it's only 309 likes. If we got 438 people listening, we should have 438 likes. You're right about that, Don. I don't know why they don't hit the like button. They got some against the like button. I think the like button knocked them for a bitch one time. But no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um I uh let me ask you, do you know anything or ever ran into uh, Mel Taylor? Mel Taylor? Uh, that was years and years ago. Uh, that was, uh, what's his name, Daddy? Andre. Uh, Andre Taylor's Daddy. Yeah, that was years and years ago. I hadn't seen him in years, you know. And then I heard he had, had died, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so many of them, man. So now, many of them now, got up out of here, you know. Okay, now, as far as like in them Oakland, though, in them Oakland days, them Frisco days, coming up, uh, we want to, I just want to know some names that I ain't never even heard before. Um, did you know about, you know, because I know that Philmo, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that Philmo started in the, uh, the 50s. Uh, yeah. And I want to say that Philmo started either 53 or 55, one of the two. Um, well, Philmo is 11 years older than me, so. He okay. was in the game way before he thought about a game. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so during it, like, did you know any of the uh, the pimps at that time when you were younger? You know, uh, that was doing their thing. That was pimping. You know what I mean? Like a mad Russian in the fifties. Uh, the one I knew was like Milton Peter. Uh, they had another name, Billy Eckert. They had another name, Marcel. Uh, then they had Phil Moore. Okay. Uh, before then, they had Charlie Montgomery, Charles Vian. All of them was uh, out of L.A. players way back then. A lot of people wouldn't know them because that was way before us. Right. That's what I want. Them yeah. names right there. That was way before. Yeah. We need the history. Oh, but they had so many of them. There were so many of Mel Salisbury. I mean, there were so many of them. Yeah, man. definitely I, heard I, of Mel Salisbury. I can't even think all of them. Did you ever we hear had, about uh, uh, Sweet Jesus? Sweet Jesus is a personal friend of mine. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Personal friend. What, uh, what's, what stories, what memories do you have of Sweet Jesus? Man, Sweet Jesus has been standing tall for since the, forever. Real smooth gentleman. Real smooth. He's out of, uh, uh, I think it's uh, Ohio. I think, was it Ohio? Well, I get those clothes made. I think I got my minks made in Ohio. Yeah, my mink hats and everything. So he's out of Ohio, you know. About the way of San Francisco. Wow. But yeah, he's been holding down a long time. We kick it all the time. He called me sometime now. You know, he he's uh he's always on my side. You know, right? Always. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the ones that go ahead. you know, the guys that's really on my side is the ones that's the realest. You know, the real ones are on my side. All the real ones, like the Ward Brothers, Sweet Jesus, Pilmo, all the old school that's about the real, they're on my side. Right. The new way, they're going to look the other way. They wanted to take the strikes away. They want to discredit you. They want to do everything. But the real ones, the genuine ones, all of them on my side because they real recognize real. Hmm. Um... I don't, like I said, man, we, you know, I have to do this because there's so many young pimps and, you know, uh, when we no longer here, hopefully this video will still be here, you know what I mean, so the young and up and coming pimps, man, can get educated about a lot of the informative representatives in the ancient times that was doing their thing before we was even thought of. Um, yeah. What, what did you know or what, because I understand that uh, you had your dealings with him back in the day. Uh, you didn't. Uh, can you tell us anything about uh, Bishop Don Magic Juan? Yeah, Bishop is cool. We all right. I just don't never uh, see him that often because he'd be on it one end doing his thing, and I'd be on another end doing my thing. Right. But we we are cool, you know. Uh, you told me you always don't, you always just stick up for him, you know, when people. You know, and say things that, you know, really ain't true. You would always basically let the truth be known. Uh, oh yeah, most definitely, that. most definitely. You know, most definitely. one thing I can say about Bishop, whatever they say about him, all I can say is whatever he have done, it's been stand up. 
because he had proven that he had been there and done, done it. You know, people say a lot of things about a whole lot of people. Man, just out of, you know, they, they pick who they want to say something good about and they pick who they want to say something bad about. How we come up, we didn't do that. We embrace all game, you know, as long as play fair. But these guys nowadays, man, they just look for anything just to, to pick you apart with, you know, for some particular reason, you know. That is not how it goes. You know, we show love. That's what we build on, love. Man, right. we could have a, a house full of everybody, but we're going to get along and show love all day. And, and uh, ain't going to be nothing, no bullshit with it or none of that. This new wave thing got it all twisted up in the night. I don't even understand it. That's why I don't even want to be around it. <laughs> That's why I keep it moving. <laughs> I stick with my own kind, you know. Right, right, right. Ain't but a few, ain't but a few of them that's left. Right. All the ones that, all of my friends is dead and gone, the real ones. All the real ones is dead. From that, yeah, from that era. Uh, yeah. They, let me, let me, let me ask you this. Um, before I move on uh, to my next question, um, because like I said, I know the, the P's, they're going to want to know different names and who was doing this and who was doing that. So in your era, you know, uh, from, let me just say, uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know what I mean? Who at that time, you know, Verge was really doing it, they, really having it they way, you know? I ain't talking about oh, yeah. I ain't talking about who popular or who was famous. I'm talking about from what you seen from sixties, seventies, eighties that was having things, doing things in the street. Pimping. Oh man. Hey man. You talking about when the game was good? I can name a gang up when the game was good. Because Everybody was getting money. <laughs> when things turned upside down, <clears throat> where it was kind of hardy, and when you got to use your future thinking cap on, everybody felt paid now. So it's a whole lot of them that was having money. Ain't no doubt about it. One time you couldn't find nobody that wouldn't have no money that was in the game. Mm. But when that crack come in effect, and it, it took everybody's brain. That's when everything stopped. But a whole lot of players was having money. Wow. Can you can you bless us with some of them names at that time that you know uh, that you admired? You know, people that was really doing it, having it, authentic. Well, me myself personally, I've never been you know. Funny style guy, I admired all of them because I like to see them win. You know, with no jealousy, with none of that. We just all under one umbrella. But I had a friend named Benny Pay, Mary Nugg, International JJ, Charlie Brown, uh, John O'Quinn. Leroy, it's a gang of them. Uh, I mean, then you go to Frisco, you had uh, Ralph Chestnut, you had CJ, you had uh, Jimmy Kim, uh, you had Potato, you had the Beasley, you had Ron Newton. I mean, then you go over to Oakland, you got the Ward Brothers, you got Ricky Jackson, you got uh, Keith Smith, Ricky Smith, you got uh, Buddy Brazil, Frank Brazil. I can go on and on and on. Everybody was having money. <laughs> got uh, Ricky Tien. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Not none of them yeah. Then you got, uh, 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 you go to Richmond. You got, uh, 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 SD. You got, uh, uh, his brother, uh, shit. I can go on and on and on. Man, just so many of them. It's, so, man, it's a lot of, it's, Hundreds of them that was having money. Yeah, you know, I ain't, like you, you say, you talking about when you, you know, go on. You got on SD. Uh -huh. You got SD. You got, I mean, it made it so many of them. Rolls Royce shouted. I mean, you can go on and on and on. You got Memphis Red. It's just so many of them. Yeah. All over. Now, what pimps, what pimps did you like and that you fucked with coming out that Memphis? 
Uh, uh, Mrs. Red is still right there in L.A. He's smooth cat, you know, real smooth. Uh huh. Yeah, he uh. I'm messing with him a lot. I still mess with him right now. I see him sometime in L.A. right now. Okay. Okay. Well, before we sit up there, because I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to have to ask them some qu- I'm about to ask you uh, one question about this one particular lick that's really about to make a lot of people's eyes <laughs> light up. Um, okay. But before that, I, want, I just want to know this. Why is humility? Because if we study you know, how big you did it, you know what I mean? And we'd be like, man, Virgil was at that level, man. God damn, motherfucker just buying every goddamn thing. So, you know, um, I want to know how important is humility, you know, uh, in the game? Because when you at an elite level like that, you know, uh, of course you want your circle to be small. And not just your circle to be small, but... There's just certain things that you can't do. You have to abstain from. And a lot of times the spotlight can be too bright for the things that, you know what I mean, that you're doing. So I just want to know, you know, uh, would you say humility is a necessity? Like, is it uh, wise to be humble, you know, in the game? Well, it just all depends who you are. Some people can don't have to be humble. They go out and, 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 and do some things that the next person cannot do. Everybody don't wear the same size shoe. You right. Know, you got some people get out and talk loud, man. People are gonna love it. They gonna love it. See you coming. The right. next person uh, gonna do the same thing. They gonna hate to see you coming. It just all depends on the individual. You know, everybody got their own personal style when it comes to their own personality traits. You know, you just got to fit them. Just like when a tailor makes suit, they got to fit you. Got to fit you perfectly. You know, and that's why you have it made. But. It just all depends on the individual. I got some guys, man, I don't even feel right if they ain't there. And they some damn fools. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just get a laugh out of them, you know? Uh, like Teddy LaPue. Okay, hold on, hold on. Don't get, don't get to Pep yet. Don't get to Pep yet. We're going to say, <laughs> we're going to say, we're going to yeah. save Pep. You know, because <laughs> we got to, uh, no, nah, we can't let you get away that fast. Because it's too, you gotta, gotta keep that, you know, I gotta, I gotta milk you for everything. Come on now, stop. Okay, what I want, what I want to know about is some of the biggest licks that you didn't have, you know, in the, in the game, Virgil, you know what I mean? Because one uh, that Pepe Le Pew used to speak on, or uh, then told, you know what I mean, many people about this one particular lick, you know what I mean, that you hit, that he seen with his own eyes. You, uh, do you mind telling us about that or not? You want to tell us? Well, you know, one thing, I never speak about is money. I never flash no money. I never show nobody. You know, I'm always been kind of funny when it comes to that. But uh, put it this way. It's one of the biggest one that any player ever had, ever <laughs> got. Put it that way. Well, I'm going I'm to just say this. Because that's why I brought up humility, because as you can see, when I asked that question, you know what I mean, uh, Verge set up there, you understand me, and put on the cologne of humility. Most in, uh, in that conversation would have immediately, you know, told. But what I will say is this, you know, um, Pep basically had made it known that he had seen it physically. You know, uh, what Verge basically had broke that bitch for, you know, and when she when he broke that bitch for what he broke that bitch for, you know, he broke that bitch for, you know, hundreds, hundreds, as in plural, hundreds of thousands, you know, what I mean, hundreds of thousands, you know, what I mean, because at that time. You know, his name was already ringing bells and things like that. So the bitch felt like that's how she had to come with it. She had to come, you know, bombarding the dough, you know what I mean, with that, with, with, with them hundreds of thousands, you know what I mean, um, simply because that's the way he was doing it at that time. You know what I mean? He wasn't no small fry. And she just thought that she had to give everything, you know, and that's what she came with. 
everything, you know. Well, you know, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. My game was never no other kind of way. When you come, you got to come with all. You know, I'm not going to accept it no other way because if if you give it all to me, I know I'm playing my game for all. If you give it half to me, I'm playing my game halfway. If you give me a little bit, I'm playing my game a little bit away. And that ain't going to, that ain't going to, see, my respect got to be first. My demands have to be second. So everything else follows that. So if you give my type of respect, that means you got trust and belief in what I say and what I do. Then you're going to follow my order all the way. All the way. Yeah. So, so the whole, because the whole, the whole thing. Go ahead, because I'm gonna take care of all my responsibility. I'm gonna keep my word on everything, and I'm gonna treat you like you're supposed to be treated. But I know a woman gonna think for my heart, and a man had to think for his mind. And a woman, I had a woman one time told me, "I reject everything. Off. I need a man in my life. I don't know what to do with this here." Because it might blow up at any time the way I feel. A woman can buy your car today and catch you what she think you're doing tomorrow and go tear it all up. You don't heard that. A man ain't going to do that. Mm. So anytime a woman herself will tell you if they think, they don't have no control when they start thinking because they don't think in their mind. They're different animals from what a man is. The capital N means mind. Man takes from his mind. What what is in your in your opinion, Bird, what is the um major differences from the ladies of the yesterday era to the ladies of today? A lot of different. That T V got them all messed up. They got it. They got it where they want to. Well, I wouldn't say it's all the ladies' fault. You got a lot of weak men that make deals and bow down to a lot of things that he's not set up and being a man about. So this is like a disease that goes all over the country, all over the world. And a woman likes a man. Well, let me say she loves a man. But when you stop being a man, that respect level drops. Cause you're going to get tried, whether you know it or not. You're going to get tried. And when you wake up, you ain't going to have no respect left. Because she's going to be there to you all the way down. And what's so cool about it? She know what she's doing. You just ain't going to know what she's doing. And actually become happy. And that's just the way it comes. Mm. Now, when you said the TV got them all messed up, I want to know uh, what are some housewives? Huh? <laughs> housewives. How, how, <laughs> housewives and uh, 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 housewives. Uh, the program. Hip hop, love in Atlanta. Yeah, and love, all yeah, of that. Okay, yeah. love and hip hop yeah. and all. Okay, yeah. so. Because of the things that they see on television, they conform into a lot of uh, belligerent, ignorant, and fraudulent, you know, uh, you behavior. Okay. And yeah. the ladies of yesterday, um, you know, and especially the ladies in the game, what made those women special in the days of old, Virgil? They respected life and respected the game. Women now, they... That TV got them, but they just, they you know, they got any response. You said they not they what? They followed the leader. They followed the leader. The blind leading the blind. <laughs> <laughs> they only act on what they see. They don't know no better. Right. And, and, and once they get that stuck into them, it's just like them put some hair around in their arm. That means they stuck now. Ain't nothing they can do. Mm. They don't even know how to shake it. Wow. They try to shake it, they get sick. They confused. Because it's a mini shepherd. 
put on your feet. Sheep. I mean, a lot of sheep. Only a few. There's a few shepherds, but a lot of sheep. And all they, all they do is follow. They don't do no thing. And going back to what I said a little while ago, water seeks its own level. A fish will go eight feet in a fish tank, but that same shark will go 80 feet in the ocean. So if you don't elevate up to that ocean thinking, you're going to still be in a fish tank thinking. You ain't going to go past that. You ain't never seen an elephant and a rat run together. No. They're not no. compatible. No, they're not So you got to bring that person up to your level. I'll go down to there. And you'll be a damn fool to go down to there. You might well shake the spot if they can't bring them up to that level because it's not compatible. And that's what we're dealing with. Mm. Other other than um other than the beautiful women and the character of those beautiful women uh of the days of old, um, because you called it, you said when the game was good. I want to ask a question. Why did you say when the game was good? What made it good back then? Well, you didn't have too many uh, objects in the way. You could buy a car. You could buy a new Cadillac three or four thousand dollars. Your rent was but seventy five eighty dollars. You got so much money every day. You didn't have no drug, major drug habits. Select a few did, a couple of few did, but the major people already give a stack their money. So that made life more better for everybody. But once you throw a plank in it and put a conflict in your life, you bring problems with it. So that's what makes the game more better then than it is now. Because now it's more problems than it ever been. Hmm. Bring comments with himself, you know. Now, what would you say is the difference between uh, the pimps of old, uh, from the old days when you say the game was good, uh, compared to uh, this new wave uh, shit? You know, what, what's the difference in character? Well, you got a whole lot of people that really out here and they don't even know the rules and regulations of the game. Back then, if a woman chews, it's happy temper to you. When a woman chews not they it's gonna get the pistol and shoot you. So they got different upbringing from how it was back then than how it is now. You got guys wanna walk down and try and hold him with that woman and look behind the corner, peek behind the bush. Oh, no, no, we'd be sitting at home when I damn did work back in the day. You know, <laughs> Virgil, you, Virgil, yeah. you say, you say, when he get knocked for his bitch and shit, he will grab his pistol and he want to kill the pimp and this shit. All of that, man, you know, it's a gentleman's game. This they no, no rough neck game, you know, gentleman's game. Right. And uh, they treat they they treat it all just the opposite, you know, because of their upbringing, you know. uh these are TV players now. Uh, the rappers that acting like they uh, used to be in the game and this and that. They don't go nothing like that, man. Wow. I'm I'm one of the, I'm one of the originals. I got it from the originals over me. Yeah, so that's why it's different now. You know, the bros don't respect you. You know, and you know it. You, you 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 play tough on the outside, but you're weak on the inside. You know, so it's different. Man, um, what I do want to uh, I want to ask you before we get to uh, uh, to Pep, what are some of the things that you know uh, a young up and coming you know representative uh, in the game? What can he do uh, to improve himself? What can he do to put himself in position? that'll help his campaign for years to come, that'll keep him winning, that'll keep him knocking, you know, uh, women that are marketable, beautiful, you know what I mean? Because that's one thing that I know about you. You know, you didn't fuck with no handsome bitches. You know what I mean? You pimped on 
you know, uh, uh, the bra that you had, you know, and this actually came, I think, from Phil Mode to uh, GB. Now, the years when you kept it, and this is what I mean when I say that, because I know it was a, a, a difference between, because it, you didn't come in the game mixing. You had came, it was years when, you know what I mean, that you was just all the way from the womb. And what I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, when you kept it all the way from the womb, you know what I mean, uh, Virgil was only known to fuck with, you know, attractive women. You know, Virgil didn't fuck with uh, handsome bitches. Virgil wasn't taking just anything and everything that wanted to fuck with him. You know, uh, he Virgil didn't have a, uh, I put a wig on a pig, you know, and get a gig mentality. You wasn't fucking with uh, li uh, lions, tigers, and bears uh, from the Brook, uh, the Brooksfield Zoo. You know what I mean? You didn't campaign at the, in the garbage can. You know what I mean? You was knocking, you know what I mean, some attractive broads. So what are some of the things that these young players, young representatives can do? You know, and also I want you to t uh, say that, Virgil. Why is it so important to have, you know, now of course we know intelligence play a major factor uh, and comprehension you know, loyalty, the characteristics and all of that stuff. But why is it that, you know what I mean, for the, the, the ones that's listening right now, why did you go after, you know, them, them beautiful women opposed to uh, a handsome bride? You know, because you know, you know as well as I know, you know, we got some pimps in the game that had some bitches that was, <laughs> you know what I mean, that, that, looked, that, that looked like Larry Holmes, that looked like Leon Spinks in the face. You know what I mean? We, we didn't have some brides. They had some bras, you know what I mean, that was, you know, quite dangerous in the face. So why did you go after, you know, the attractive? Why was that so imperative to have for you? And then after you say that, you know, give the young representatives uh, some, some, some game on, you know what I mean, basically what they can do to help their campaign to stay in position uh, for years to come. Well, me, myself, personally, I was always particular I'm still particular on everything that I do. I have to have particular clothes, particular jewelry, particular home, particular women, particular food. Everything <laughs> I, I, I have is particular because I have a, a thing about myself. I got to please me. I'm not going to make my work hard by having an ugly ducking with an ugly attitude. <laughs> and if she's beautiful and got an ugly attitude, she's still just as ugly to me. Right. <laughs> so Talk your shit, man. <laughs> I, got, I got enough confidence in me. You know, a lot of people are afraid to mess with a woman that's too pretty. I got enough confidence in, confidence in me. To know I'm gonna put my bones in her and she's gonna be what I want her to be. Cause I'm a groomer in her mind. I'm a groomer all the way around. Cause I don't care what a woman thinks she look like. It's always something that she don't like about herself. Even if you don't know, mm. she gonna know. But I have to have something around me that's decent enough for me to groom. Now, if you look like a booger bear, I always say, uh, man, they, they can, they, they can way better than me. <laughs> <laughs> that just never been my caliber. <laughs> I got, you know, I gotta have some, the way I carry it up around me. Right. Know? And I'm gonna groom it to perfection. Real. <laughs> yeah, I've have, I never have had some beautiful women that just didn't qualify. I had to get rid of them. I didn't have them now. Right. They they they, they uh were too pretty to go out and get the money. They was out there just for the look. Uh, and they just couldn't get it. So I had to let them go. Beautiful, gorgeous. But they wasn't cut out to be that. See, every woman ain't cut out to do the same thing. You got to get them what they're qualified to do. 
And I can give up some major games, but it's too high profile for the average person to understand. So game is really to be sold, not told. You don't give up all games because people destroy games when you bring something to them that they're not ready for. Mm-hmm. So you don't give it to them. You got to baby step. You got to baby step. You got to walk two steps at a time. You got to groom them for that. And that's something you have to do your woman. You got to groom them for position. I used to even want to let a woman in my stable until she was ready. Okay, what does she think she looked like? Yeah, I'm the one in demand. A lot of guys push that woman up to the top before she really gets to the top. And that same thing could destroy your whole game. So you got to be a man and stay a man about whatever you do. Keep your respect level high. Some men just get what they qualified enough they think they can handle. I always reach for the sky. I'm not afraid. You can look like Queen of Sheba. I'm coming at your ass. <laughs> and I'm going to keep being a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What'd you say, Birds? I'm coming at your ass. <laughs> Full yeah, blast. I'm coming at your ass, yeah. Right. You're not afraid of rejection. I am, yeah. I'm not afraid. Right. Yeah, because I know what I'm made of. Yeah, I know who, who the captain of the ship. It, right. Now, could yeah. you could you explain that uh, to the young men? What do you mean when you say, I put my bones in them? What, what does that mean? I put my bones in them. When I say I put my bones in, that's creating your own monster, if that's what you want to say. That's creating your own monster. That same woman right there will be tiptoeing in and walking through the game like she walking through a hundred house, like ghosts would appear at any time. That's how they look. But when you get through with your ass, you're going to put your bones into them, that she'll stand up and she's going to take what's coming. Head on. Hmm. I like that. I like that. I like yeah. that. Because I know that you, you know, uh, I know that you always say that, you know, I put my bones into them. You know? Yeah. I create, you know? I mean, you put knowledge into their brain. Mm-hmm. You elevate them into another phase in their life that they can understand. So everything's protected around you. It's like playing chess. You know? Yeah. Everything's protected around you. Now, I want a lot of people. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, where? Go no, ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. A lot of people would say that I did this and I did that. You can't find one person to say I did none of it. Because, like I said before, big game is played smooth out of sight. But I can tell you how to do it if you want to get educated. But if you're going to get fooled by fools that's been telling you and shooting you to the left, telling you lies and all that, and that's what you ride on, that I can't help you. But I can give you a whole bunch of games. But you got to be ready for it. And you can't give it to them before they're ready. Because they ain't going to understand it. You can do them more harm in yourself more than you could anything if you give it to them before they're ready. But game is what I got. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's, that's that's evident. Yeah, that's yeah. evident for somebody to be winning from 1963 to 2020. I mean, it's just it's, it's but, evident. That's what I'm saying. That's kind of unheard of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's, it's all. I mean, if you're looking at it for real, and you got enough sense to look at it, you're a damn fool. If you can't look at something and tell what it is, and you're looking at it with your own eyes, but you want to say it ain't there, you're a damn fool. Right. Right. And that's most of where conflict come in at when they be. You might say something about certain people, and they want to down it. But they're the one that's not even qualified enough to down it because they're not doing nothing themselves. But them the one that want to do all the talking. Right. 
So, you know, it's a lot of controversy, man, thing when it comes to controversy. Controversy fails, though. I laugh. I laugh at it because I hear a whole lot of things, even about myself, that I know not true. And they can't even, don't, can't even imagine how it goes. But I laugh at it. It's funny to me. I know they're going to be wrong because I never put my game out there where a person could see it. I had 18 brawls at one time and didn't nobody know it. But I get party, I got 15 brawls in the party there, and they don't know it's mine. But a few people, my friends know, to come out of state. And this be right up on their nose and they don't know. So at one time, wait a minute, hold on. Hold on, Virgil. We can't just move past that like you just didn't say that, like that's just some little thing in the corner. So at one time, you actually was presiding uh, over 18 women? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And these were 18 hoes? 18 money getters. Okay. Okay. I like the way you... Yeah, money getters. Money getters. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. And what year, and what year, um, what year was this when you was presiding over these money getters? And I like what you, I like what you said. I like that, I like that title. Yeah. Now, now, uh, hey, uh Don... Let me just say this. Hold on, uh, Don uh, Willie. Hey, um, it's a difference. It's, see, like, okay, let me explain some things. Now, I'm not gonna go into names and all that, but when you hear somebody say they were 17 to 18 deep, 20 deep, 25, 30 deep, um, that's not really unbelievable at all. All right. Uh, the unbelievable part comes in when an individual tell you that they was 20 deep, 25, 30 deep, and they never got knocked before. All right. Now, mm -hmm. when you have individuals that tell you that they uh, was this deep and they never got knocked before, ask them, was it the, the women that they was presiding over, was they hoes? Okay. And if they say that he was presiding over 20 or 30 hoes, and especially if he said he presided over them for years and he never got knocked before, the nigga lying, okay? But if, <laughs> if, if, if somebody, I'm just, because you know I ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. Whenever I bring somebody on my platform, I'm going to let them tell <laughs> their truth, and then sin going to uh, come with their truth because I'm in the truth because I'm, I'm active, you know, in this shit now. So what I'm saying mm -hmm. What I'm saying is this, for him to be 18, uh, presiding over 18 money getters, nigga, that, that ain't, you see, y'all don't know anything about Jap, and hopefully uh, one of these days I'll uh, sit up there and, you know, uh, have, uh, you know, Jap come on and give you his history and different ones, but if you know anything about Jap, if you know anything about Mackie, uh, I can keep naming names, presiding over 18 women, especially in, you know, uh, back in the day, nigga, that ain't shit. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's the shit, but no, that you making it seem like that's, like it's a comic book or something. Nigga, this is Virgil we talking about. Nigga, this is a Rolls Royce drive. <laughs> nigga, you know who you, you see, this is what I'm going to say to you. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of y'all, y'all look at the documentaries, all right? So because of the documentaries, um, you thought certain people was like, whoo, this is the elite of the elite. Listen, there's so many guys that was bigger than the guys that you've seen in the documentaries that you don't even know about. You never heard about. And then there's certain people that was bigger than big when certain documentaries came uh, out. And the only reason why they wasn't in the documentary it's because they declined to be in the documentary. There's a lot of things that you don't know. So, you know, don't ever say, uh, that's Cap. No, Virgil not lying about none of that. If he tell you that he had 18 money getters for everything that he was doing at that time, that's not nothing that's like out of the ordinary. Not for somebody like that. Not for somebody who had a status in position like that. No, you know, go go ahead, Bird. You had 
And, and I want to know how long did you have them? And then I want to know also what was the longest that you had? And that's why I always ask uh, the question before we get all the way into the macking. But when it was just uh, pimping, when it was just all the way coming out the womb, what was the longest that you ever presided over a hoe in the game? Mm, I would say you know I would say 10 years but see my thing when I was younger it was cop and blow you know a holding last for 6 months of me but I pimp hard you had to be a stand up stay up under mine and I already knew it when you come in I say but when I get a little older I'm going to lock block and hold so I'm going to tone down a little bit and uh, stop being so raw because I was raw when I was young. I, I, I'm going to tell you, I was raw. I'm, I wouldn't say raw, serious. I didn't play no games at all. But, you know, when you get older, you learn how to finesse your way through because everybody ain't can't step up for the same type of pressure, you know. Right. And uh, so I, 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 I admit my fault. I ain't saying I've been a uh, uh, perfect I got flaws myself, you know, but I admit my flaws, you know, and as I go, I grow. You know, as I go, I grow. Right. So that's kind of where one of my things went, you know. I grew all the way in. That's why they gave me the name the great, great, great grandmaster, because I mastered the game, you know. And uh, if they had any idea what kind of dope, that, that 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 I was taking off, they couldn't imagine because the elevation don't stack that high. You know, I started getting mine off the top shelf. I started getting mine off the dress. I started getting off the top shelf. You know, because I elevated my game. You know, like I said, I can really give a person a whole lot of game, but I wouldn't do that. You have to be real close to the people under me for me to give you some game like that because I know they're gonna abuse it and they're gonna misuse it because they're not ready for it. I had a personal friend of mine that was like my brother. I took him under my wing. This was 1974. He ran with me every day. He was a youngster. <clears throat> I took that youngster and made him bigger than everybody. All his young friends, they got mad and jealous of that youngster, man. They killed him. Wow. Yep. Because I put him in a new Cadillac. I took him to the tailor shop, had him tailor made, had him jury made. Wasn't none of his young friends like that. Man, ended up killing that boy, man. But I gave that boy a lot of game. And he started, he turned around and he educated me a little bit. I said, okay, okay. He <laughs> catch me slipping, he shake my, jack my chain, you know. <laughs> and, uh, uh, because you know, I used to be my bro, two, three, I used to win him ride on him. I leave my outside. Three, two, three days. And he took one time and said, man, you kind of want to ride through, just let him at least see your face. I said, man, you're right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so I said, you're right. I can't let him get too relaxed. He's right. You know. Well, anyway, man, uh, the man's woman got shot on the track just when his bad luck started happening. All his young friends started hating on him, you know. And I gave him some game. And I told him word for word what was going to happen. Man, he, he wasn't ready. I loved him, but he wasn't ready. Wow. He looked the part. He reacted the part. But mentally, he wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. Man, he beat him out of all this money, man. And I told him, I said, you sure you can handle it? I can get you play for play how it's going to come now. Identical. Everything I told him was going to happen, it happened identical. And he wasn't able to stand up on it. Anyway, make a long story short, man, uh, he started falling by the wayside. So his other woman started losing respect for him. She left. He had two bros. He had them for a couple of years. Wow. And, uh, and man, so I took him down. I said, man, look, man, you got to do something. He lost his car. I had my partner go get his car for him, save it for him, to keep, try to keep his game up. I said, man, you know. You got to go to do something, man, so you get some money, so you keep your head above you can catch another bro, man. I took him down to LA in my motorhome, some friends of mine. 
and they got him some uh, uh, some of that snow to come back so he worked until he get back on his feet. And uh, man, they, and I'm about five deep at the time, so uh, I had a friend of mine named Bill Taylor. I just knocked a snow bunny off down in L.A. Remember Bill Taylor? Yeah, the heard. heard him. Yeah, I didn't hear the Bill Taylor. Yeah, 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 good, good player, man. You know, and uh, so when I come back, man, I leave Bill Taylor in L.A. So I'm riding snow buddy around just to see how the night works, and I'm and just checking, the, you know, checking my traps and everything. So we gonna knock on his door after he get back. He don't answer, and uh, I ride back to about an hour later. You know, and after well, maybe he's over there trying to get his brawls back. You know, that's what I'm first thing kind of my mind. Man, the next morning, my partner called to tell me, man, you hear what happened to him? They killed him last night. And that man was dead. Right after I dropped him off, they told me, I don't know what happened, but they killed him. Wasn't ready for the game. So sometimes the game can hurt you, you know, if you're I, not ready. I want to I wanna ask you, you know, um, because I know how this thing is. I know how this lifestyle is. And I know that, yeah. you know, just like it got its ups, it definitely got its mm. down. Um, Ain't no doubt. What was some of the uh, adversity that you had to deal with? What were some of the, the things that you had to go through? Was it any times that you had to go through it to get to it? Was it any time that you was without you know, is there any time that you have? Oh, like, man, it's a, it's a merry-go-round and roller coaster ride. It's been a lot of time I've been without. It ain't been no smooth sailing all the time. It just didn't last long for nobody to know. If you go ask anybody, I, I ever been down, you ain't going to find no person in the game to tell you that I, I ever failed. You can't find one person to tell you that. But, sure, I have been down several times, but it didn't last long enough for nobody to know. But I stayed down for my crown. Okay, okay. During these uh, the times basically that you was down, you know, um, what was what was transpiring? You know, why was you down? You know, how long was you down? I don't care if it was for two seconds, two weeks, or two months. You know, what I mean, what what had transpired uh, during this time? What had transpired? Sometimes don't anything transpire it's just how life goes you know uh it 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 it's just life is funny man mm -hmm. get a transition on you you don't know what didn't happen and why but all you know is it ain't cool and i've seen a many players that happened to not just me a many of them now i might stay down about uh a couple months dibbling and dabbing you know uh, another month here and there, you know. But that's what I'm saying. Nobody, I stay down long enough for nobody to know this. But yeah, several times it happened to me in life. But it's been for good and bad, put it that way. But right. I remember two or three different occasions that it really, really touched me, you know, but it just didn't last long. But look up, and I'm back on back top and passing people that's been doing things all the time, you know. Yeah. Now let me yeah, ask, let me yeah, ask yeah, you because yeah. I know you you went to school with the twins. Did you uh, uh, and, and and let me also add before I even ask that question, how did you feel when you heard? Because different pimps got their own uh, uh, way that they felt or you know their opinion about that song that song that the uh, the whispers did. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I remember that. <laughs> you know, about buying a girl a car. Yeah, yeah, a car. yeah, I'm talking about Olivia. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, they were so mad about that, man, back in the day. Bill Taylor told me, he said, man, I thought this nigga was cool, man. He don't want to buy a Kemba Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, he was mad about that. You know, now certain pimps, yeah, you know, they took it as that. another song, but, you know, some of the pimps was angry at the Whispers, man, when they came out with that Olivia, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, you for know, sure. They for sure, I heard it in my own ears. Yeah, they wasn't feeling that Olivia, man. So for you young cats that don't know nothing about Olivia, you know, lost and turned out, uh, when you get a chance, you know, go listen to the whispers, Olivia, and just listen to the lyrics. And as you listen to the lyrics, you can quite understand why a lot of pimps from that time didn't like, you know, Olivia. 
Um, did you have like any other dealings or go to school or run into uh, any other celebrities uh, during that time? Yeah, you know, I had Natalie Cole in 1976. Hold on, hold on, stop. I got to fix my speaker. Hold on, you said you, you, you said you had who? Natalie Cole. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The great, the great Natalie Cole that, you understand me, is the daughter of the Nat King Cole? Yeah, Nat King Cole's daughter. Oh, what, so... If you don't mind me asking, you know what I mean? How did this thing even come about? How did you even knock, you know what I mean, Natalie Cole? Okay, uh, let me give you the story. I left Fresno in 1976 because the police was on me so tough. I told you that, that, that ever since I got in the game, they was on me. So they stayed on me for years. So this guy that I knew was working downtown in one of them offices, and he kept his ears tilted to the floor. And he called me and said, man, you got to leave. They're coming at you. I say, what? I already knew I was hot in town. So I fell up, grabbed me a few pieces. I got my car moved to Oakland. I used to come around once a month to pay my bill because I had two plates in Fresno and two plates in Oakland. <coughs> so my cousin said, man, let's uh." He introduced me to uh, a guy that could help me with my taxes. And uh, I wanted to get the heat up off me, so I wanted something legit. So they'd leave me alone because I didn't have nothing legit at the time. So he put, he, 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 he introduced me to public relations and a business account that could help me with my taxes and all that stuff, so they didn't leave me alone. So I, I built an office. I bought an office. I was 20, uh, I think 20, 20, uh, I don't know how old. I was in my 20s. But I bought the whole office. And all the people started working for me. So we built up a company called, uh, I forgot the name of that company. It was a, 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 a entertainment company. I started booking entertainment for the entertainer. So I ran to Rick James before he got cranked up. Uh, and the first one I booked was, was Lattimore. So I used to go back and forth. I'm, I'm on the radio now. I used to go back and forth. Uh, back and forth, getting all the entertainers together. And so my public relation man was affiliated with a, one of the back uh, ground singers with uh, Nat Nicole. So that's how uh, I hooked, we hooked up together, you know, and then we had a big thing up there in San Jose, not San Jose, but mm, right before you get to the circle star, where well, they had a circle star, had a revolving stage. But anyway, me, Natalie Cole hooked up right that night. Uh, Gene Upshaw, the football player, you heard him? No. Gene Upshaw. Uh, we was all together, all the celebrities up there together. And I was amongst the celebrities, you know. And we hooked up, we got to kicking it, and we went on to the Circle Star, and I was in the in the, the back uh, room with Natalie Cole, and we just hooked up. That's how we hooked up. So uh, everybody know about that down to it to Fred. And we had a we had took a picture together that night. So I took it to my tailor, and he snatched that picture from me and never gave it back to me. Put it right <laughs> on his front desk, <laughs> and so that's how we hooked up with Natalie Cole. And my partner had one of the backup things. How long did you have uh, Natalie Cole? Well, we wasn't really together that long because I was on a move a lot and she was starting to just get her big break to go around the country. So it didn't last that long because I I was doing big things and uh, I ended up saying, man, well, I got more money than her. So, you know, I, I just never bowed down to nothing, you know, so... It was my fault, the reason why 
that we just kind of let her go her way and I went my way. But then she got hooked on drugs after that. And uh, been in L.A. Uh, smoking crack and stuff, sneaking mm. the car and doing the thing. And her and the Chaka Khan and, you know, that kind of stuff. So that kind of shied me away. And uh, we just went our separate ways, you know. But it did happen, you know, we were down to Fresno together. And that's James Brown. I was around all the celebrity uh, group at that time, you know. So, so, and, uh, so you met, so you also been around Shaka Khan to Chicago, though. Yeah, on the Zoom. Yeah, on the Zoom, but not. I was going to book Shaka Khan one time, but never. They didn't want to book her because she kind of faded out during this time. It's like it's seventy six, seventy seven. You know, she wasn't that popular at that time, so they didn't really want to get her because for some particular reason, because I had everybody kind of working for me, you know, to pull them in, you know. I was just, I was just the man that owned the business. And so she'd be down to L.A. with my partner's uh, uh, brother. That's who she was really involved with. Now before and I so ask, that's kind of how that went. Now, before I ask about Pep, I just want to know, what businesses did you preside over? You know, uh, the businesses that you had. At what time? I got businesses now. I know. <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> You've been having businesses that I don't know when. But, you know, yeah. um, basically from the time uh, when you were, you know, younger. You know, uh, you know, I'll say like, uh, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s and things. The 70s, I had the entertainment company. Okay. I booked uh, entertainment all across the country. Matter of fact, Lattimore was one of the first ones that I booked. Then I had the rest of them just coming in, you know, California Malibu, the Bean Brothers, uh, Johnny Taylor, uh, Bobby Blue Bland. Uh, yeah, I had a few of them coming through. Then I saw it finance and a lot of them down in Oakland with uh at the uh I forget the name of that place. Think of it. I can't think of the name of that place down in Oakland. You know, I had a, a lot of guys they start promoting, I just start financing them, you know, so they keep the uh groups coming in, you know. So I was just kind of playing with money during that time that I had some money, you know. And nobody really wasn't having that kind of money back then, you know. So I kind of was in a loop with a lot of things there. You know, you're all the way up to the Black Knight when I used to have the private rooms in there uh, with the security around this. You know, they always treated me, treated me really respectful, you know, everywhere I went. Because they were the older guys that knew how to, how to respect the real, you know. And it's a lot different now than it was back then. I, I love the old school way, but I like the new school thing. Right. Now. But yeah, I, 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 Rick James, I, I gave him the, mm-hmm. the number to my tailor because he liked it how I dressed when I come to the clubs at night, you know. Before he became major, I knew him. Oh, okay. The, the Mary, the Barcade, all of them, man, I was in a mixing with, you know. Uh, matter of fact, I talked to one of the magic now still, you know. We talk every now and then. He got my books, my DVDs, and the whisper past them, you know. And so yeah, I've been I've been kind of all around the horn, you know. All yeah. I've been dancing all around it, you know. Now I want to know uh, when did you first meet Pepe Le Pew? I met Pepe Le Pew in nineteen sixty-eight. Okay. And so, when and when so you we met, went on and on uh-huh. and huh? And and when you met him, what was y'all doing? Like, where was it at? You know? Oh, it was, it was at uh, in Fresno when they come down to Fresno. Cause like I say, everybody from cross country used to come to Fresno because my name rang all around the country, and it all rang really, really good. So everybody was wanted to have a pleasure meeting me all around the country. So in 1974, I think I was 11 deep at the time. 
And everybody come to my house. All the players come through. So one of the guys come through, and Pepe was there. And he called me in the back. I thought I took him in the back to talk to him. And he had this Mexican girl that he left in the in the uh in the uh he left Mexican girl in the room there with everybody so Pepe starts talking Spanish to the girl. Nobody never could speak Spanish, you know, Pepe was a fluent Spanish speaker, you know that right? Yeah. And the Mexican girl talking back. And when I come out, the guy was a little puzzled, and they talked in Spanish to each other. <laughs> I was the laughing because I understood what the time it was, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think Bro was all the way out of pocket because Pepe got in and talked me. And, uh, but nobody understood what they were doing but them two. So I guess tough Pepe moved her. You know, uh, the guy ended up, something happened to him, he ended up going to penitentiary. So that's uh, one of the encounters that, that another encounter that me and Pepe had, you know. But Pepe, uh, he had a good mouthpiece, and he would tear your ass up with this game if, you, <laughs> if you're slipping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're slipping, he's going to tear your ass up. <laughs> Don't care who you was, how you come. I'm the only one that Pepe didn't do that, had that kind of respect that he didn't do that with. Right, right. <laughs> Everybody else. Yeah, tear your ass. If you slipping, <laughs> he's gonna tear your ass up. Yeah, he will. Didn't yeah. care, didn't care who you is. <laughs> yeah, he will. No, he don't care who you are. He's gonna test the water with you. Right. If you say one thing wrong, he's gonna be waiting on it. Right. He's now, coming in on you. Now, how would you define uh, Pepe Le Pew's uh, character? You know, tell us some things about the characteristics of Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> Pepe was a character. He liked to have fun. He liked to pop his whip. And you know he liked to play in the snow until he died. That was his lane. Right. You don't care who knew it or how it was. That's what he loved. And that's what he stuck by to the day he died. And that's what that's his comfort zone. Right. And from the beginning all the way to the end. And boy, he's a he's a he's a pistol. Uh one thing I can say about him, he wasn't soft when it comes to his game. He was serious about it. No, he wasn't soft at yeah, all. He, no. Nah, he, he didn't play with it. No. Nah. Yeah, he didn't play with it. Definitely I had. I see a whole lot of dudes more softer than him. Yeah. And I, I, a whole lot of them. But Kevin, yeah, I'm going to put him in the top five with it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he ain't going to play with it at all. Me, I'm going to tell you the most serious players that I have seen in a long time. That's myself. And another player by the name of Benny Pace and Pepe Le Pew. Those three I could put my money on when it comes serious about this game. I don't care how many titles and how many this, and everybody else be talking that shit. Those three, me, Pepe, and Benny Pace, I know it's serious. We don't play. We ain't making no deals. Man. Okay. Um, when you had met, uh, our, when you had met Pep, of course, you know, you know, uh, he was speaking Spanish to the girl and things like that. But give us some pimpish stories. Like what, you know, um, did you ever get an opportunity to see him, you know, at his best, you know, when at, at his reign, when he was, you know what I mean? When he was pimping, <laughs> when he was having it his way, when he was doing it his thing, in the game, you know? Hey, 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 man, the man was, the man was good. He didn't mean six, seven, eight deep, you know. He didn't play no game, so that's enough right there to let you know he wasn't playing. Right. He wasn't playing. I see a lot of dudes screaming, but they don't mean it. Right. Yeah. He, he was not playing. And boy, don't get around no crowd and say the wrong thing. Yeah, James. He's going to eat you up alive in front of everybody. Yeah. He was at my house one night. There's about 20 players up in here. 
Pepe told him, said, hey, but two pimps up in here. <laughs> and then that's me and Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody else said a word. I remember I remember um when me and Freeze came to um uh Crooked Mouth's uh home going when we uh when he had his service and when we came to Crooked Mouth service I remember um Pep saying, Well, you know, um you know oh yeah, James, yeah, just to let you know, you know what I mean, Virgil don't hide nothing, you know what I mean? If you had watched the previous video uh with Virgil and Ron Newt you know what I mean? They had made it known that they had mixed it. They didn't hide anything. They didn't put on the Oscar Award performance and told you that everything that they had got in the streets basically came from the womb. They told you that they was mixing it with the spoon. So you didn't even have to ask that. You know what I mean? They had came bold, boldly through the door the previous video. And Virgil didn't uh, sit up there, you understand me, and uh, uh, hide anything now. When you're dealing with men... You know what I mean? A man going to tell you uh, the truth. A man ain't going to sit up there and put on no Oscar Award performance because that's one thing about Virgil. Virgil is endeavoring to win for self. He's not really consumed and concerned, you know, what another man thinks. Uh, you know, because a lot of y'all, you do things for the gratification of another man. That's not Virgil. Mm -hmm. You know that's, what I mean? That's, that's not Virgil. Right. That's not Virgil. You know what I mean? He gonna make mm -hmm. sacrifices and do what he gotta do to win. You know, and he made well, it. Well, see, I, know, I just know the real game. You know, I could, I could, I could wake a whole lot of people up, but I just don't do that because it's too confusing to them. I could name names and do all kind of shit that would shock the world. The world would come over. The cedars would come down. Walls and everything would break because it would surprise them. But I ain't gonna, and you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that, you know. But if a person got any sense or any game, mm -hmm. you already know it don't. Riches don't come from just no one way. Well, and I, ain't no major player that I encountered mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. did it like that. Well, I, I just, I like I say, like I say this, me and you, in that regard we always going to have uh, a different philosophy, a different opinion, a different uh, oh, yeah. perspective. But I respect yours. You know, I, res I, respect, yeah. I respect yours, and I respect the way that you've been doing things. And, you know what I mean? Like I said, you're one of the coldest max, you know what I mean, that has ever lived. You know, that ain't, that ain't even to be debated about. You know what I'm saying? But like I always told people, when it comes to the macking, you know what I mean? Man, uh, block that uh, fake sinful to pee. Uh, get, 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 in New Jack City, take that nigga outside and kill him three times. But, um, you know, the Mackin, you know, uh, and we one day, me and you, Virgil, maybe we might go live. And I might have a few more representatives and we can all basically share our thoughts. But like I told people, when it comes to that Mackin, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's 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 subjective. But ain't nothing subjective about this pimping, you know. And, right. you yeah. know, uh, ain't nothing subjective about this pimping. When you ask people about what a Mac is and what Macs do, yeah, you know what I mean? They're going to tell you that Macs, you know what I mean? They're going to get their revenue from different avenues and they're going to mix it. There and you fix go. It. There it is. You know what I mean? They're going to do their thing. But a pimp, you know, he's basically going to check it. Only from the womb. In other words, yeah, in simplicity, that's one way, yeah. a, a pimp. You got to, you got to a this pimp only a pimp. Know, Go ahead. A lot of them don't know. You have to elevate to become a Mac. Like I see, don't know that. see, see when you when you said that, like I always tell them, if you travel to different locations, different representations, <laughs> they gonna tell you, you know what I mean, different things. The Bay Area, they gonna tell you that it's eleva it's elevation uh, in the pimping. And then uh, if you talk to the Memphis cats, they're going to tell you it's the difference between uh, MAC and MACK. Uh, if you go travel uh, a little bit more, you know what I mean? People going to tell you that, you know what I mean? The Max is, uh, you know, uh, players, man. You know what I mean? They're going to play. You know what I mean? They're going to go different routes to get their money out 
of this and that. So like I said, man, everybody got different opinions. You know what I mean? But don't uh, uh nobody's opinion got no dominion over this game. I respect the Max, the gangsters, the the players and everything like that. But it, but when you speak to sinful, when it comes to the highest of the high, that's why I say our our, our philosophies is our philosophies is different. Because when it comes to the highest of the high, ain't nothing higher than this pimping. <laughs> ain't nothing higher than this pimping. But, um, you know, like I said, everybody got different opinions, and I, re I respect that. And that's one thing I liked about Pep. Me and him didn't agree on everything, because you, uh, you mentioned the blowing, and, you know, it was many times I called Pep trying to uh, <laughs> preach to him to put the, the blowing down. And he said, simple. <laughs> he said, simple. I was blowing before I met you, and I'm going to be blowing to the day that I die. That's what he told me. You know? Mm -hmm. So I can't, you know, I can't. That's you, know, you, know, you know the thing about it, man? A lot of people preach and teach things they really don't know about. That's where confusion come in at, debate come in at. And I was there from the beginning. It's just like when a preacher and a Muslim, they don't like to debate because they got different opinions when it comes to certain things. So they don't debate that. And that's what I don't do. Mm -hmm. When it get out to the bottom line, winning is what counts. You get a lot of people standing on this, a lot of people standing on that. But when it get out to the nitty gritty, they want to take a picture with somebody they ain't never seen a whole in their life mm -hmm. and be grinning and skinning with it. But when they get out to another player that they feel like it's something, they didn't want to turn their nose up. Mm -hmm. When I was coming up, all mm -hmm. players, all our big was on that one umbrella. Right. It's just like going to the penitentiary. Everybody had the same khakis on. You don't know who's who. Oh, I didn't even so reckon. It's a lot of discussion, a lot mm -hmm. of discussion there when it comes to this here. Now, Especially, I sit back and laugh because I know mm -hmm. sometimes you, when a person opens their mouth, they tell on themselves. You, they open themselves from inside out. You know what they don't know. You know what they don't qualify to know. And you know everything. That's when a person really knows. Right. Well, yeah. like yeah. I agree, I agree with you that it definitely is about winning. Um, but then one might say, what is the definition of winning? And then, you know what I mean, do I have to compromise what I am and what I do in order to uh do this uh so called, you know, uh winning? And what I well, will say, you know, everybody, ahead, ahead. everybody's in their comfort zone. Okay. You know? Okay. Some some people is is is, is uh yeah. like to sit low. Some people See, like to sit medium. Some people like to sit high. Whatever well, this will listen. This is what we gonna do, and I want to hold you to it. You know what I mean? Because I didn't realize we was going on. See, you said thirty minutes. We didn't sit up there, Virgil. We me and you've been talking damn near for two <laughs> hours and thirty minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so hopefully, man, in the future, what I do is you and a few others that basically share the same view as you and some that share the same view as me, you know, maybe one day we can share our thoughts on different topics and not debate or argue or scream at each other, but just share our thoughts and just intellectually just put it all there on the table and it just is what it is. Um, but now it's, uh, damn, I didn't even know it. Like, I wasn't even paying attention to the time, Virgil. We going on two hours yeah. and thirty. Did you want to? Did you want yeah, to say I would, anything? I would, I would to, love for to take it real deep and take it just some real game. Okay, but they're not ready for it, and I know they're not. Okay. Okay, but did you want to say it, something? It, 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 did you want to say something to uh, them before we uh, close out? Well, yes, I just had a good time for the listeners. Hope they got some out of the conversation. You know. Uh, they caught me at a bad time when I've been running all day long, you know, <laughs> but I'm going to catch it on a fresh start when it's really fresh and I can really give it to them raw and uncut. Did you, did but you? Yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to debate with nobody about how they do things. Cause some right. people don't even, 
they, they don't get past ground zero, you know, when it comes to knowledge, you know. Right. And that's just how it is on all phases of life, you know. Did you have, uh, like, a book or a movie or something that you wanted to promote? I, I got a book out called From the Inside Out. I got another book called Death is Not a Game. I got another movie that came out called A Familiar Lie and uh, Baby in the Hood. I've been on uh, uh, with Omar Gooding with Family Time on Bounce TV. I got a documentary out, My Life Over the Top. And that's where I'm at right now with book producing, book writing, movie production. And that's where I'm at right now. And I know I got enough material to stop right now and don't do nothing at all and go get two or three million just on that alone. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get that. Do you, uh, Virgil, tell them, hurry up, tell them uh, your Facebook or any other uh, where they can reach you at. My Facebook is under Ray Fairley, R-A-Y-F-A-I-R-L-E-Y. My Instagram is Virgil Grandmaster. Keep up with me. Stay up to pace what's going on. And we're going to take it to the next level and look out for my next interview. My book, my next movie is called uh, 